earlier about recruiting. Um, you'd, you've said that you don't want to be overconfident, but you think we have a good shot at making that goal this year, the goal being 55,000. But isn't it the case that you dropped your goal this year because not many people are joining the Army since you joined or since you became the secretary? It's true that our goal last year, Senator Cotton, was 65,000. General McConville and I set that as a stretch goal. That's how we characterized it. So this year, between 55,000 new contracts and 5,000 in the debt, it's 60K. La last year, you forecast that you would need 62,600 for this year. Why did you cut that? Again, we, we look at what's possible, and we set a goal that we think is both. Do you look at what's possible or what's needed? Well, we, General George. What's possible is pretty low since you became the secretary. Actually. But there's a question of what's needed for our army to defend our nation. Senator Cotton, the chief and I are both committed to growing back our end strength. We are aiming to get up to 470,000 by 2029, and our recruiting is improving consistently. Well, well, if it's improving because you're throwing a dart at the wall and then drawing the bullseye around it. In your first full year on the job, the target was 60,000. You didn't even get 45,000. Last year it was 65, you got 55. You had projected last year for it to be 62,600 this year, and conveniently you decided just to change the goal to 55,000, which is exactly what you got last year. You don't, you don't think that is a little suspicious, that you're simply trying to avoid negative headlines once again for your failure to meet basic recruiting goals, goals that we've met almost every single year since 2005? I'm not focused on headlines, Senator Cotton. What I'm doing is doing everything possible to help the Army improve its recruiting, does, and that's what we're doing. Does the Army need 7,600 fewer soldiers than you expected this year than you expected it would need last year? The Army has been able to meet all of the requirements that the combatant commands have levied on us at our current end strength, and our end strength is going to start going up. What are, the require, what are the requirements that have changed in the last year from those combatant commands that allowed you to drop your goal, not just from the 65,000 it was last year to 55 this year, but from the 62,600 that you predicted last year that you would need this year? What requirements have decreased on the Army's... Uh, uh, the requirements haven't changed, and we were able to... I wouldn't to, think so, since we the world were, was going up in smoke because of Joe Biden's failed policies. We were able to meet all of the combatant command requirements last year. We've been able to meet them this year, but we're still focused on growing our end strength. I mean, we, we, we met our recruiting goals at the height of the pandemic in 2020 and 2021. You can't meet your recruiting goals now without dropping them by 10,000 from what they were last year? All of the services are facing challenges, but I'm proud to say the we services have... Services acute. Your, the challenges for your service are acute. Yes, we ha because we have the biggest force and we have to recruit the largest number. But we are doing considerably I mean, I'm, I'm better every, this year. I'm looking at every single year here. 62-5, 68-5, 76-5, 68-61-2. -5, this is not a systemic problem until you became the secretary. Senator Cotton, I don't think that there's a correlation between me becoming secretary and the recruiting headwinds that the entire department has been facing. Okay, I, I want to touch on another recruiting matter, or I guess a, a force strength matter. I noticed a, a story in Stars and Scripes from January that there's a shortage of about 250 officers in Adjutant General Finance and Signal Corps, and the Army was going to ask infantry and armor officers to transfer. Has that happened? I'll have to take that for the record. General George, yeah, do you I know can, any more details? I can, yeah. Um, typically, as you know, Senator, we have uh, typically have more combat arms, yeah. lieutenants. Um, so that's, that struck me. Typically, we do VTIP. Um, we've, this was a, done a little bit earlier that we knew because of our structure. We're actually growing some additional MDTF, which came up earlier. Signal is, for example, is one of them, or MI where you typically have more captains and majors than you do lieutenants. So that, that was what that was. And what we did is took volunteers. Um, we just put the message out because um, we want to keep talent. And it's actually really good for us to infuse those branches with people that have experience in the combat so, arms. Yeah, normally things like signal and AG are, are donor branches at the lieutenant ranks to infantry. But I, is infantry officer ranks, whatever the Army as a whole, infantry armor officer ranks are healthy right now at the company they're, level? They're he we're very healthy for, for lieutenants, Senator. We're doing okay, well thank on you. that. One final issue, um, Secretary Warmoth, the caisson platoon. Uh, the Army just acknowledged that they're not on track to get caisson operations back up 
at Arlington National Cemetery. This has been an ongoing issue now for more than a year. We directed you in the NDAA uh, to make sure the caisson platoon remains in existence. You fought that tooth and nail last year. What is the issue here? It's horses pulling wagons. It's been happening since before recorded time. Why can't these families who have a right to a horse-drawn caisson at their funeral expect that's gonna happen? Senator Cotton, first of all, we didn't have any plans to get rid of the caisson platoon. We've actually spent well, a lot- You fought my amendment tooth and nail about it, so I don't know what, I mean, I don't know if you have a animal rights activist from PETA on your staff handling this issue, but why can't you get horses pulling wagons in the cemetery? There's a range of challenges, and we can come and talk to you the in detail. The Old Guard did this for decades. Yes, and the horses decades. that did that for decades are now old and lame. They've and always been old. They've always been retired from other activities. Well, we are now trying to grow the herd. We have we have been focused on this incredibly hard. We're looking at additional pasture land. We're going to have to rebuild the stables that you probably remembered. But we are very focused on trying to get to a point where we're able to offer, again, the caisson service if, with the funerals. If the Army, under your leadership, can't figure out horses pulling wagons, it's not a surprise they can't figure out increasing munitions manufacturing or drone warfare. Thank you, Senator Cotton. Senator Peters, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 